Sunday morning recap as I've been I've been doing these for a couple of few weeks now. I'll continue. This is following up a day yesterday where I was solo in the studio, which is where I live also. And uh, I realized at the end of the day, I said, you know, between text and emails, I uh, didn't speak yesterday. I didn't talk. Maybe it's because on Friday nights, I do the, the live stream with the layer cake the layer cake gang, as we were, we were kind of self-named, um, you know, you talk for three hours. Friday was three hours, and um, as I've said before, if you're not a member, they become members only um, by the end of today. They'll be members only. It'll it'll be members only, and we covered some good topics. I'm going to talk about some stuff today. That, um, some good stuff, some random stuff, of course. Turn up your playback to 1.5 or 2.0, depending on how old you are. Because I don't talk super fast. And it sounds fast to me because I haven't talked in about 24 hours. So, things that are going on inside, I, I, I think I'm naming this one... Um, something to do with with being an OG or being referred to as an OG, which if somebody had told me in 1996 that uh, a million years later I'd be referred to by young guys as an OG or even older guys as an OG, I would have been like, uh, first of all, what does that mean? Second of all, I would have been like, yeah, you're out of your mind. Um, I don't think you think about those things when you're in the moment. Um, and one of those things that got me thinking, there's a couple of things that got me thinking about it in the moment. One is very sad. It's the passing of DJ Clark Kent. He uh, passed away this week, uh, a few days ago, of uh, cancer. I knew Clark going all the way back to like 1992. Four, I guess five. No, probably five. 1995. He was definitely around some junior mafia sessions that I was doing. Um, some little Kim sessions. He was at least around. Uh, I did a record with him for Charlie Baltimore. I did a couple of records, a few records with him. I was trying to figure out what tracks I had done with him or what I had mixed. I know I did. I mixed one for Charlie Baltimore on the Woo soundtrack, which I totally forgot about until I was looking in some of this stuff up. And uh turns out I have two credits on that record. But, you know, whatever it's worth, I'm talking about Clark right now. Clark was a very big personality, um, upbeat, very New York City. I mean, when I talk or wax poetically about the guys from the New York studio scene and the cats and the uh, the OGs now, um, someone like Clark Kent comes to mind because he was of that archetype. I mean, he was super enthusiastic, definitely competitive. Uh, you, just, you know, he had that look in his eye, like he was ready to do stuff or, you know, and he was doing stuff and he did stuff for decades. Um, the last time I saw him, I was working on the Alicia Keys, Diary of Alicia Keys album. And I was on a different floor where they were doing pre-production. I don't know why I was up there. I was up there to like talk to Alicia about something or something while she was up there writing. And I turn around and in comes Clark. And, uh, you know, I didn't know that he even, I don't think he even knew me by name to, to some degree, but it was like, we knew each other. 
by seeing each other in in sessions and he he made me feel so like uh um good is the only way i could describe it he was like ah oh, you know and he called me an effing legend which i was like you know taken aback but it was like kind of a cool feather in the cap in front of uh in front of Alicia, in front of other people, it was just kind of like, "Wow, man, thanks for." I mean, if you're, if I'm a legend, you're a legend. It was one of those things. We we're having fun with it, but um, great dude. Uh, I haven't seen him in a million years, as you know, with a lot of people. And, and the studio world is is a is a different animal in that people come and go in your life, and they might be in your life for several weeks months or even a year or two like a lot and then you will never see them again um do you keep in touch occasionally you know some of us some people fall off completely some some you want to fall off from completely it's uh you know when i have the glasses off you know it's somewhat of a serious thing um but yes rest in peace to clark to his family my condolences if anyone comes across this um i i remember to this day i'm dropping that beat for uh for charlie baltimore uh, the money 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 that thing with uh the isley brothers and he, the way he flipped it and he i believe he used an sp 1200 and um his drums everything was he was it was it had energy to it and i remember this whole like phasing thing that was going on with the tracks i remember that being an issue but it was a good issue it was intentional or whatever i don't know i don't remember exactly i'd have to go back and like listen to that track uh to go back to the um go to the wayback machine and check it out but uh let's go to the the stream friday night we covered a bunch of stuff um the usual fun banter uh, a lot of debate about uh analog and digital and in the box um noise suppression noise suppression was a big thing discussing whether you liked dvx or dolby c or no no noise reduction at all this is with tape of course and um talking about mpcs because i've been tossing around the idea of pulling an mpc back into my studio I don't know. I'm talking myself into it. I talk myself out of it. I use the MPC software plugin, so I do have access to a little bit of that. And I have a Max 49 keyboard Akai with with the pads. There's only 12 pads, and there's no 16 levels, which I dogged somebody on about the 16 levels a week or so ago. And um, so there's this. I'm throwing it around. In the comments, put your recommendations. I'm tossing around. I mean, I'm all over the place. I, I'm going with the... One minute I'm going with the MPC-37 with the little keyboard. Another minute I'm going with an MPC Live 2. And then I go to the idea of, like, maybe I'll just get an MPC-1 Plus and just, you know, kind of tinker around with it. I mean, I don't need it to make a track. Um... I have a million other ways to make a track and have made a, a gazillion tracks without an MPC in my arsenal. But I did used to have a 2000 and I, I enjoyed it. I do have the obligatory black AES uniform on. I don't have the black jeans on. I don't even have jeans on. I have, uh, I do have pants on. They are camel color or whatever they are, just to be clear. I don't want to be that guy on a stream with uh, in shorts. So, yeah, the stream, we covered a bunch of that stuff. Um, also talked about, I, I threw it out there that I'm going to have some people on my channel soon, especially once I figure out how to have the guest thing in OBS. But uh, I do have someone confirmed for Wednesday that was... Um, well, I'm, we're going to record it on Wednesday. I don't. It's not going to be a live stream. Um, it's going to be recorded and then posted, I believe. 
because I haven't talked to him about it being alive. He might be afraid of going live with me. We go way back. It's someone I mentioned on the stream. If you watch the stream, you might be able to put two and two together. Um, but it's happening Wednesday. I'm looking forward to it. I haven't spoken to him in a bit. And we will have um, some fun things to talk about, I am sure. I'm looking at some notes. Oh, yeah. It's, um, yeah. So on the OG thing, just to get back to that just for fun, um, like I said, I don't think there was none of us that thought that when we were making albums and records in the 90s that someday some internet kids would would call us OGs. Just, first of all, there was there was no YouTube, there was no internet or whatever. So there was no, there was no such thing. Uh, there was no opportunity to be that. And then as things have gone along, as they, where they are now, um, if you are a young dude who's, or a girl that's like making records right now, production engineer, mixer, you probably aren't thinking that maybe someday, 20 years from now, that you'll be considered whatever the term will be for an OG then. Um, you might be. You might be an OG 20 years from now, 30 years from now. You're not an OG right now because that's just not the way it works. Um, so if you are a YouTube content creator pretending to be an OG, you might want to pump the brakes, as we say, or they say on the internet and everywhere else. Uh, this is my little bit of moment of controversy for, um, you know, the, the proverbial content creators, they can do with this with what they like. But as I've talked about before, and I talked about it, I sort of talked about it a little bit on the Friday night stream, like, I've never done music as a hobby. And I don't, th I think that's, it's a great hobby for someone who's doing it as a hobby. But just in the same context that I don't, that I've never done it as a hobby, um, I can't relate to the person that does it as a hobby the way that they might hope that I could. It's just, it's just not possible because the mentality is not there to, to say like, well, what if I was doing this as a hobby? I mean, I do, I do photography as a hobby. I couldn't expect a professional photographer to understand where I'm coming from with the idea that I bought maybe the same type of camera that he has and I run around taking pictures and I'm, you know, doing it as a hobby. To that guy, to that photographer, it's just not the same language. So when you have these scenarios of content creator guys who are doing things and relating to people that do it for a hobby. I mean, I, for instance, I heard someone say the other in a comment or read someone in, in a comment, and I've seen this on several occasions, someone saying that like, well, beat making now is a thing in that people put out records that are just beats called instrumentals. And they were actually coming across like this is something new. Like instrumental albums have always existed. Before there were vocal albums, they've existed. Did hip hop start that way? Not necessarily. But if you're making instrumental albums, that's cool. If you're calling it, you know, I make beats and I put them out as records, that's cool too, but you can't expect everyone to relate. I think it's a great 
in, in a lot of ways, it's a great hobby, just like, you know, guitar playing can be, or playing guitar and collecting pedals. I mean, the guys I know that have more pedals than gigging professional guitar players are the the guys that never leave their their uh, bedroom or basement, you know. You go down to some guy's uh, man cave, so to speak, um, and he's a guitar enthusiast and a pedal enthusiast, and the, the guy will have more pedals than Guitar Center has in his cave. And... Ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars worth of guitars. He's never played a show in his life, or played on a record. That's cool. You can't expect the working professional to a hundred percent relate. So I'm going to talk about that, some of that stuff uh, on Wednesday, probably with my buddy that comes on, and I'm gonna, I got a few other uh, sneaky little guests that I'm going to be bringing on um, because this is very much an extension of my time in during uh, the pandemic in St. Louis where a few friends that I'd become acquainted with in St. Louis we would get together on Friday mornings for what we called men of leisure and it was like multi-generational there was like a guy in his 20s guy in his 40s, 50s, and a guy in his 70s. Uh, he was almost 70, I think, at the time. Um, and we would get together and chop up studio stories, production stories. The, uh, the really young guy would learn a whole bunch of stuff that like, he couldn't even grasp and also would never be coming in contact with as far as like you know editing tape and things like that. Like He was never going to ever have to deal with that. Um, and then in, on the opposite side of it, like someone like me, I was hearing a guy in their 20s talk about things that he was dealing with on a production level and on a mix level that just was crazy foreign to me. Like I was like, that's really happening now? Like, like in the things that you're doing with like up and coming new producers and kids and it's always evolving Someday you'll be an OG, hopefully. Um, it's a weird feeling to be called an OG in a lot of ways, because then you're, you know, there is a there is a uh, reality that you've been in the game forever. 